All right, well, we are recording. It is December 3rd for those that are watching this in the future. And um, today we have Tech in the Field. Tech in the Field with our tech experts, Lee Fund and Nick Irwin. No pressure, uh, just as a open sharing. So this is uh, meant for everybody to have a chance to ask questions and share any tips, tools, and things that you use and have a chance to learn how they're using some tech in the field. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna make sure, I'll just kind of be moderating here if anyone, um, it looks like everybody's got kind of them muted, but if you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat. I'll try to keep my eyes on that and um, go ahead and I'll turn it over to Lee and Nick. All righty. Well, hello everybody. Happy Thursday after Thanksgiving. I hope your week was fun and crazy like mine was. Um, so I'm going to discuss RPR, which it stands for Realtors Property Resource. And it is something that is included with your dues through NAR. Um, and you can access it at NARRPR.com, but you can also access it on mobile. So we're going to attempt to, Nick and I both are going to share our phone screen at the same time we are talking. So there may be a little bit of a lag, um, but we're going to give it a go. So give me one second while I get on here. While they're getting that pulled up there, if you want to put in the chat, if there's any tech things that you have heard about or are interested in, um, or want to make sure that we at least touch on if we can't answer those questions go ahead and put that in the chat and we'll make sure we have a log of that so we we at least touch on that so don't be shy to put anything in there even if it's real tracks we'll point you to the right place for those things so righty so you can find this in the play store app store wherever you get your applications on your phone so this um, has three sections right when you first log in. Um, so it'll have your recent activity, which is this screen, and it's all based on your location. So um, if I was in 12 South, this would look completely different. Um, so I have properties for sale, new listings, recently sold, uh, distressed properties and leases. Uh, RPR is actually the largest distressed property database uh, in the country because it feeds directly to all the MLSs um, and then the tax records as well. So depending on if, like if you want to look in Memphis or I don't know, somewhere in Arizona, if their MLS is opted into uh, RPR, you can actually look at properties on there. Uh, it won't be as um, intense as it would be on like obviously real tracks, uh, but you can view properties all around the country, which is pretty cool. Um, so right when you log in, it's going to have this screen right here. Then you can slide over to the right. And it's going to have some stats on where your location is. Uh, Edgefield apparently is where the uh, East office is. And then if you scroll one more time, um, this is where you could, this is probably going to be your most used screen. You could put MLS um, number in there, address, zip code, all that fun stuff. Um, and we'll worry about the other things at the bottom later. Um, but we'll go back to um, the first screen right here. So once you tap on uh, properties for sale, it's going to bring this screen up and then you can obviously move it up and down. Um, I prefer personally the list screen because it's just a little bit easier to see the properties that you're going to look at. Um, let's see, we'll go, but you want to go back on map. If you zoom in, when you tap on one of the properties, it will bring up a little uh, icon at the bottom with all the details. And then when you tap out of it, it goes away. Um, down here at the bottom right, uh, yes, RPR, Scott. Uh, the bottom right, the three dots, when that comes up, it's gonna show a bunch of different options. So on here, it'll have time travel, I almost said, travel time, uh, which is not always accurate because one time I looked at this and it said, this was obviously pre-COVID that you could get across town in like 10 minutes during rush hour in Nashville. And we all know that that is uh, a lie. So just kind of be careful when you're looking at drive times, but that is an option. It syndicates all of the data from I think Apple Maps and other GPS applications to determine what the average drive time is from you know A to B. Um, the parcels, we'll go ahead and fire that on. What that's gonna look like is when you pull up tax records on CRS, it's gonna give you the same kind of outline for um, each parcel. Another cool thing is when you zoom in more, 
which it has been kind of finicky recently, but when you tap search again, it will actually pull up all the properties that are off market um, and it will give them a value that is called the RVM most of the time. And it's similar to a Zestimate, but it's a little bit more accurate. It stands for Realtors Valuation Model. Um, and that just pulls in MLS data as far as pendings, obviously solds and actives to give you kind of a, a better idea of what, you know, a guesstimate price could be. Um, obviously, you're the expert, you're going to want to, you're going to want to run your comp analysis and you can do that in here, but don't depend on these numbers just like you wouldn't depend on any automated uh, system that tells you a value. Um, let's see, let me go back. Um, so we'll go up here to the search option. And I have a property. And at any time, if you have a question, just fire away. Okay, so as you type it, you can see that it will slowly bring up the address. So you tap on the address. This is going to be the main screen that you'll see. It will typically be on one picture just like this. So we'll just start at the top and go down and I'll kind of explain what each feature looks like. So the little man standing right here, this is just going to be your street view like it would be on Google. If you tap the airplane, that's obviously going to be the above shot. Uh, the next icon would just be one picture. Uh, the, the last one is going to be four and then you can scroll through each one. And I'm going to try this and we'll see if it works. But if you turn your phone sideways, it actually allows you to, okay, it worked. Uh, look at them in landscape and not the other way. So, all right, so it's going to show the list price, price per foot. Uh, and here's where you see the RVM. So it's saying that this RVM is uh, 980. And obviously, the list price is not that. So if you tap on RVM details, it's going to give you the range and a little bit more stats on that area. So they're saying our idea is it's worth 980, but it could be 930 all the way up over a million. Gives you the last sold price, more stats on the property. Looks like this one is under contract. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in RPR. Um, I don't even begin to know all of them. There's a commercial side that you can look at to run analysis on property. You can look at investor, the investor analysis, which will compute kind of the APOD and just kind of all crazy things. We're not going to go that today. That's way advanced, but just know if you want, if you work with investors or you really want to get into the data that RPR is really helpful and you can use it for that kind of stuff. So, um, and they have great trainings for free on their website. Uh, listing data. Cool thing about this is if you're using this on your, uh, when you're out and about, you can just tap call agent. It will give you the office number or the mobile number to call. Just give some more information on that agent. Keep scrolling, it's gonna give you the description that's in the MLS, um, kind of the map view, traffic directions. We'll skip uh, create comp analysis for now, but we'll go back to that. Um, as you keep going, it's gonna give you flood zones, walkability score, if it's in um, what subdivision. So on this one, it gives you the owners if they live there. Uh, you'll see where it has public listing and your changes. So public would be the tax records and then listing would be what the realtor put in the MLS. Uh, your changes, that comes into play if you were gonna run a, a comp analysis or you were just gonna save this property for later. Let's say you go in an old home and they have added a half bath and for whatever reason, the agent didn't put it on there. You can kind of make these changes right here and it will save it. It won't obviously change anything in the system. It'll just be saved to your RPR account. So let's see, so we'll keep scrolling. It's gonna give you all the super fun details. It'll give you the median estimated home value compared to um, the zip code that you're in and then a date range, which is kind of cool. Um, price change history. It's just, if you love data, then RPR is like your best friend because it gives you, it just explodes with data. So just make sure if you are gonna use this for your client, especially if you're gonna use the reports, that you can explain it and you don't go in with uh, this huge uh, report and you have no idea what it means. So sometimes less is more depending on your client, but it does give a lot of data. So uh, keep scrolling. That's interesting. I said it was comfort. Okay. Um, MLS listing, it'll give you what they bought it for. Um, the loan amount, kind of all the details that you can see and CRS, but just a really easier way to see it. Um, 
what schools they're in, everything. If you keep scrolling past all of this information, you'll get down to legal description, what their mortgage is, let's see, tax records. It even goes into if it's a, if it is a dis distressed property, it will actually give you the date that it's going to be sold at auction. If it's in pre foreclosure status, um, that kind of stuff. So just be mindful of that. Um, let's see. I'll make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So at the bottom, you'll see notes. So if you tap there, you can add a type note. You can take pictures. If you're at the listing and there's not a lot of pictures, but you want to save it for a report later for your client, you can add those there. You can also add a voice memo um, and it all saves to your RPR account and you can use that information in a report later if you need it. So we'll go back to property details. Let's see. All right, so let's just keep going back. So top of the house to go home. So let's actually go back to this property that we were just at and we will where's my address? make a report on your phone. All right. So if you tap on reports at the bottom right, I'm going to show you a couple different ones. So you'll just do add a report at the top. So the property report, I want to say, don't quote me on this, but it's like 50 pages. So it's a lot of information. Uh, so we're going to do the mini property report. Um, you'll see two options here. So all report sections and all cover page elements. So if you tap uh, the radio button or whatever it's called on all reports, you can actually change what is in there uh, just to make the report a little bit smaller. Um, I'm not going to change anything, but I would say go get on here after the class, do your own property or one of your listings print the report, go through it and see what you think will be valuable for one of your clients. Uh, and I would just start kind of including that information because it can be a lot of graphs. And if your person's not analytical or that's just too confusing for you or your client, it's just gonna just be too much. So um, we'll leave that on. And then on this page, it's gonna have all of your information. So you'll wanna leave all that on there. Uh, so next, so then you, the cool thing is when you do get report, it's going to generate the report in the background so you can kind of keep working. Um, you'll be able to airdrop it. You can text it. You can email it. All those cool things. You could print it if you're attached to the Wi-Fi and there's a printer on there. Um, for the sake of time, we'll just already have this ran. So this is what the report looks like, the mini property report. So it'll have all of your branded information right there. It'll have list price and then just kind of all the stats that you saw on the screen, but just kind of in a nice report format. Um, easy to read, it'll have the pictures. Let's see, this is kind of neat too. So it'll look at Tennessee, Davidson County and the zip code. So if you wanna look at like how high our prices have gone since 2009, that's kind of interesting. Um, and then you'll just keep scrolling. It gives you know a lot of details as far as the loan amount, all that good stuff. see what else is on here. Neighborhood and statistics. I mean, it just has so much data that is really helpful. So if you did this button, this is where you could share to your clients or wherever. So go back on that one. Let's see, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, so let me show you. So we're gonna do a comp analysis. So let's go back. Did someone say something in the chat room? Let's see. So it kind of keeps you where your location is, but let's say you wanted to go over here and search what was available. You would just move it on the map and do research area or redo search in this area, and it's gonna bring up uh, recently sold, um, new to the market. You can change the filters here at the bottom. So if you didn't wanna see distressed properties or you did wanna see rentals, you could include those. Um, recently sold, um, and then you can just kind of you know keep on going with that. So we'll just kind of pick one of these. That's not a fun one. 
All right. So on this property, let's say you were wanting to create some comps for this property, or actually, let's do this. Let's do zoom in. Okay, so let's just pick this random property right here. A lot of times it will not have pictures, so this must have sold, well, it's going back to 2017. Okay, cool. Um, so you would just tap reports. You could do create a comp analysis. So this is where your changes would be important. So if you, let's say you're going to this property and they've told you, yeah, we added a full bathroom or a half bath or an extra bonus room or bedroom, whatever, you can make your changes here and just put that in and then it would shift from the public and then you could create your report based on a four bedroom, three bath instead of the three bedroom, two bath. Um, if not, if it's all the same, it'll just kind of keep on rolling. So this is where you're going to find your comparables. Uh, this, in my opinion, this is way easier to do on either an iPad or your browser just because of the size limitation. Um, but maybe that's just me being an older millennial that I still cling to my <laughs> computer. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so on here, this is where you can add. So you'll just say, okay, I'm not even going to pretend like this is a comp, but we'll just, you'll just go through, check and see, okay, I'm going to look at this one. Let's look at the pictures, see, see if it is a comparable property. If it is great, if it's not, just keep on moving. So then you would just add, add. And then once you have the comps that you want, you'll just hit next. And then on here, what's really cool is you can change the um, condition. Is it better? Is it worse? This one's going to be, you know, probably worse. This one was a little worse. Then you can just keep scrolling. We'll say that's the same. Add notes, you know, total rehab on total rehab done. And that's going to save all this in the report and into your RPR account. So it'll all be safe for you. And then you'll hit yes. Oh, I did want to mention, you can also change which property shows first. So like if you don't want to show um, the cheapest property first, then you could just change that and say that's going to be the third property and it will automatically adjust everything around. So then you'll hit next. Um, on the ranges, it's going to give you its system algorithm uh, value. Um, just be careful about that. Like, don't just do these and send these to your clients because they can be completely wrong. So you can change this. So like if you're thinking it's really going to be a $500,000 property, oh, that's, I'm missing a zero. So if you said 490 to 510, it will change that on the report. So then those other numbers will just disappear and you won't see it. Um, you can change it to email and email it directly to your client from here. I don't think that's a good idea. I think either save it as a PDF, scan it, or just open up your Gmail or whatever and attach the report that way. That way you can type a message and it looks nice. Um, all right. So we'll wait for that to uh, do its thing. Does anybody have any questions so far? Cool. Y'all are rock stars. Okay. So... Another cool feature is a buyer tour. So same thing, we're gonna look over in um, uh, Nick Irwin's uh, neck of the woods over in Cleveland Park. So you would just tap on which properties that you wanna see. So right here, or in my personal favorite, just go to the list, that way it's a little bit easier. Just go down, you're gonna see all these houses. Uh, and then you'll do next. You can put them in order of the tour. So if this is gonna be the last one. Just switch it around. Automatically does that. And then you'll hit next. If you wanna see what's in there, then you'll just tap on all report sections. It's, this is just the tour report. So it's not gonna give like a bunch of details on the property, but this is really just to give to your client in lieu of a MLS sheet. And then you would just say get report. So let's go back and see if we can see. Okay, so it's finalizing. So I'll show you while those are kind of working in the background. So the little wheel up here at the top left, if you tap that, this is where you can change a lot of your details on here. Um, 
any automatic things, like if you don't want to see any properties over 60 days or any of that good stuff, this is where you would do that. And then you would just uh, close it out by going back over. Uh, recents is also really helpful if you were like, dang, what was that property I just looked at? It's gonna automatically save all of this information. And so you would just put it there. You're like, okay, there's the property. Let's go back to it like that. Uh, searches, same thing. Okay, so tour report is ready. So if you say, okay, I'll view it later, don't worry, it doesn't disappear. It's in your reports under recent activity. So really helpful. Um, let's look at the buyer tour report so you can see what that looks like. It's gonna map it out up here, give all your information, which I need to update, okay. And um, then you'll scroll down. It'll just have a nice little grid of all the details you're gonna see on the MLS report. Um, it's just going to look a little bit nicer. I'm going to make sure it's not giving any value to me. It's okay, good. I think um, Cloud CMA has something very similar to this, um, but that's not today's class, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. <laughs> uh, okay, and then right here, I, I could just send it over to whoever. If I'm texting it to my client and they want to keep it on their phone, or you can print it. Let's see. Seller's report can be a lot. Under save, this is where if you saved any properties or any searches. So let's go back to recents. I liked this search right here. And I'll just tap the star right here. I'm coming for your farm, Nick. So if I wanted to save that, you'll just save it and then it will be under um, uh, save searches right there. So, or saved, I'm sorry, down here. Oh, I saved Smyrna in 2017. Okay, um, let's see, is the report done yet? Okay, so it's taking a little while for that one. That is really, I didn't want to get too far in the weeds with RPR because you can't do as much as you can on the computer, like kind of like poking around and searching and stuff. It's a little bit more um, limited on the application, but the website has a lot more. But we'll look at what the seller's report looks like. So <laughs> great example of if you had a picture that you wanted to take for your seller that you're doing the comps for, you didn't want this lovely um, fence and uh, <laughs> Uh, electrical line to be your first picture of your report. So you could change that. That could be one of the pictures you took. Um, you can make this go away. I did not see the option on mobile, but you would probably not want that next to the comp analysis because uh, then you're going to have an uphill batter. Hill, I mean, here they're not going to really mind because they're going to want it to be worth 500. But if on the left it says 500 and on the right it says 408, that's not going to be the best conversation to have on why there's a different number there. So, but then it's going to have, and this report is huge. So this will have a lot of information. Hey, Lee. Yes, ma'am. On the regular report, you said you can take that left hand side out. Yes, there's a way to take it where it, you will not allow the automated system to give a value. Um, and so I did not see the option on here, or I, I may have just missed it. I'm sure I could go back and let's see if I can. That's okay. I, I'll but check. there is a way to do that because you're, you know, unless that is the value you want, you're not going to want that to be. Right, right. Um, let's see. Which I thought when I put my comp analysis in, that's why I bet. Um, so yeah, so this has all the details. Um, another cool thing that you can do on here is if you go over to let's see, schools, now just be very mindful when you're um, talking about schools because there's a lot of changes that are gonna be coming down in the next couple of years because we can't uh, obviously violate fair housing, but schools are a neat little way to kind of skate around that conversation and say, oh, you need to be in this school district. And uh, so there are going to be some changes. This information comes from great schools 
uh, .com or .net. So that's where they get the school scores, the school scores from. Um, but you can search kind of anywhere. So if you did right here, it's going to look around Nashville. It'll show all the schools. So if you're showing over in Cleveland Park and they say, what are the schools like? And you pull up this school, it'll have a, a lovely C minus. Uh, and then you can just do get school report. Um, hit um, school report. Next. We'll wait for that to generate. Um, or if your client is saying, hey, I have to be in this school district. If you just did find nearby properties, they would be, you would want them Obviously, you would want to confirm they're in that school district, but it's going to give you a radius to show you what schools are or what properties are by that school. Um, but let me show you what the school report looks like. <laughs> Wish I had some Jeopardy music playing or something like that. But, um, does anybody have? Any questions? Do y'all think this would be something that you could use while you're out in the field? I definitely like the buyer The buyer tour. It's really nice. Looks better than MLS sheet. I mean, I wouldn't go killing a bunch of trees because most of the time people are just going to throw it away. But if you are wanting to make something for an out of town client and include a school report with your, your tours, it would be, you know, really helpful. Um, this is showing, so, like, let's say that the school district was just like, well, you can't see my finger on the phone, but anyway, let's say it was just a little bitty circle. It would typically just show the radius of the school district. I must have picked a, um, a school that you can get into. Um, but anyway, so it'll show the school scores compared to all of Metro. Um, I would just encourage you if you are, if you do have someone, a client that schools are important, I don't know that I would really depend on the great schools. I would take them and let them meet the principal, you know, go toward the school or set up an appointment. Like you don't necessarily have to go with them, but encourage them to go visit the school and not just look at this PDF report and make the decision that way, go meet the teachers and, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, and then it will show nearby properties for sale in this district, which happens to be all of the Metro. But if you're in Franklin, it'll be a little bit smaller. It'll be just in that school district or what have you. So. All right. Well, that's really all I got for RPR Mobile. Um, <laughs> if y'all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. If not, I will pass it over to my lovely friend upstairs, Nick Irwin. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Lee. All right. That was great. Thank you. And if you'll give me just a second, I'm trying to get my screen sharing on. I didn't see any other posts, any other technology or tech in the field that you're interested in or have used or suggest that you love. this. So, yeah. All right. So we're ready to go with HomeSnap. Raise your hand if you're using HomeSnap now. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Hi, guys. Sorry, I just unmuted myself. Awesome. All right, so um, a couple of things before you, before we actually talk about how to use HomeSnap in the field, um, make sure if you haven't already done this, click on the little me button in the bottom right hand corner and go in and update your profile image, potentially a wallpaper and build out your entire profile. That's really important um, because it shows up a little photo of you and then we'll see in just a little bit um, you're able to share that and then also download those into 
uh, into your contact records. So it just looks better if you go in and update and fill out that profile. I have found that that is easier to accomplish if you go on the website, homesnap.com, and you can either register for an account or just update if you already have that profile out there. Um, you're also able to use this in your marketing and you can text it out to your clients. Um, you know, if it's somebody you're meeting out and about and you decide you wanna to work together, it's real easy to share, uh, share this profile directly with them. So it looks good if it's all filled out. All right, so we'll jump into mobile app and how I actually use this in the field. Um, the, we'll talk quickly about the different icons across the bottom. So right now we're on the news feed. And you see, I keep pulling that down to refresh. Um, this is a smart news feed that acts sort of like your Facebook news feed does. Uh, so properties that you've listed or that you've looked at or shared with clients or other agents that you've worked with, um, the more you're in and out of HomeSnap, it, it is intelligent and it starts learning your behavior and kind of feeds information that is valuable to you in this news uh, reel. Also, you're able to use uh, the favorites option to keep an eye on properties. And if any status changes happen with those, they'll pop up in this little uh, news feed as well. There's a messaging feature. So if you look at Again, the second button over. I recommend staying away from using the message feature inside of HomeSnap. Um, I've tried it out with a couple of my clients and it is not 100% foolproof with getting messages and I don't like it. So I tell them, if you wanna talk with me about a property, you have my cell phone, let's text outside of this app. Um, so now actually practical use for this. So I've clicked on homes right there in the middle. Um, I use this when I'm out showing properties to pull up details. So much like what Lee said in the RPR reports, um, you can click this, I'm sorry, you can't see my finger, but um, there's a little round circle there in the map, in the bottom right corner of the map. And when you do that, it zeroes in on your location and then you can just pinch the map together or spread apart and it'll show you different listings uh, that are close by. There's again, a scroll down below of all of those uh, properties and you're able to click directly on any one of them to dig into it. So I'll look at this 926 Woodland Street and I can click the photo and it pulls up all of the MLS photos. And then down at the bottom of of the current listing photos, it shows the flashback photos. Um, this is helpful sometimes if there's been a renovation or uh, if it's a flipped property, you can scroll through there and, and get a really good idea of what's been updated in the property. Or, I mean, even as simple as like in this condo property, maybe I wanna see how they rearrange the furniture. You know, sometimes uh, that information is out there and, and really helpful. Um, so if you continue to scroll down, you see there's um, just a couple of different drop downs here, the cell speed, a safety timer. I don't use this, but um, you can program it to alert someone if you haven't checked in with them after a certain amount of time. So if you're showing a rural property that might be helpful um, or my listing over in North Nashville on 24th Avenue. Also, if you've got any buyers, please send them my way. I'd love to sell that house. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that was nice, nice plug. There's a center rapid CMA down below, again, similar to what Lee showed in RPR. Uh, this is kind of an on the fly CMA that you might be able to produce for your client. I'm not the biggest fan of doing these in the field. Um, I think it cheapens the process a little bit. I need to be sitting at my computer, digging through the properties. Um, you know, but if you're working with an investor, a lot of times that has a deep knowledge of the markets that you're in, sometimes it can be helpful to just fire off some information to them. Um, and more often than not, I'll use it to buy myself a little time before I can actually dig in and give them an appropriate CMA. Uh, and then there's a schedule with a showing time option down below that. And that links out to the showing time app. Again, that's a different class, but you're able to schedule a property to see. If you're out driving around, um, this is really helpful because you have to navigate in and out and research for the properties. Um, I'm always looking for shortcuts like this, especially if you're out with a client, because nothing is worse than staring at your phone 
the whole time you're you're out so it makes it a lot easier um, down below that continuing on with the property history it gives us the price of the property how long it's been on the market so that 26 days and then it shows you also the listing agent down below so you know again if you're in the house and the client says hey how long has this been on the on the market you could really quickly glance down and say oh it's been on for 26 days and actually they pulled a trick they pulled it off the market and relisted it it's been on you know 60 days or whatever that might be that notify me of price changes button will do exactly what it says so if it's a property that they're interested in uh, you might click on that and it will uh, notify you if the price might change for any reason related agents down below so again that is the listing agent um, you can anywhere inside of this mobile app you can actually click on the agent and it will bring up their profile this is probably my favorite feature in all of uh, HomeSnap. You can also access this down at the bottom where it says pro agents, that little button takes you to the same spot. So why do I love this? Well, I always like to investigate who I might be about to work with. Um, if this agent is new in the business, I want to know that. If they are not familiar with working in the neighborhood that my listing is in, I want to know that. Um, it gives you a lot of insight into who's going to be on the other side. So again, um, I don't want to look at Rachel's information. I'd rather pick on Lee since he's coming after my farm. So we'll give him some a little bit of a hard time. Uh, so I just clicked over on his profile. Again, he's done a good job and built that out. Uh, you can use the favorite option there or message him or share this profile down at the bottom. I would never give lead to one of my clients, so we won't do that. Um, again, favorite button is this add to address book. So when I click on that, it's going to automatically open up my iPhone contacts, pull his picture in, pull all of his contact information in, and then I can just click done and he's saved. Everybody um, just takes a pause for a moment in your awe of how awesome this part of the app is, folks. Amazing. It like, does alert yeah, them that you looked at their profile, though. So just no problem. <laughs> Stock your ex realtors. I, I've never done that, but haven't dated one or twelve of those. So listen, this is where it's at. You start working with somebody, or you're interested in a property. This is where you go and add them. And what I recommend is when you put them in your address book, will you hit add to address book again? See where it says village. If they're not like. As a handy thing, I would put an R in front of village or put realtor because it's going to add to your phone. And if you use your phone as your database or part of it, you'd want to be able to quickly sort that exported data and you could just pull out all the R's before a company name because then you're not having to search for Chamberlain Realty and Remax and you know what I'm saying? So that's just my tip to that that I've started doing with the add to address book, but my favorite feature. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, this how am I connected button just below that is interesting. It shows other agents that Lee may have worked with in the past or been connected with in some way. Um, so this is kind of like that, what is it, six degrees of separation thing. So it shows you, hey, I know Robbie, Robbie knows Lee. So, you know, if I'm trying to get some insider information about how he negotiates, maybe I'll call Robbie and ask him, you know. Um, you can contact them directly right from those icons over on the right hand side. So the, the mobile phone number or email them if you want to. And then again, we add the address book. The business hours and business description. So this is important on your own user profile um, to have that information built out so that it is complete here. Also down below the deal flow, I think I mentioned a minute ago about um, wanting to know how many transactions somebody has done. Um, I, I think that is really valuable information. If I have a listing and a, a agent brings a buyer and they've never worked a deal before, I, I need to know that so that I can counsel my client about what this transaction might be like. I also need to know that, you know, there are probably going to be a lot of teaching moments throughout this transaction and just get myself ready for, um, for that. And then also like the um, out of area sales. So you can kind of scroll in on where someone 
has done transactions. Now this is a sneaky and not very nice thing that I have done in the past. So this is the good stuff. Are y'all ready? We're ready? If you are at, if you're at a listing appointment and you are able to get the seller to tell you who your competition is. This is say, fair oh, game great. right here, baby. This is fair game. So hold on. You say, hold on just a second. Let me look them up. And you look them up. And if they have a ton of transactions and they've done really well, you say, oh, great. He's a great agent. And you lay your phone down and move away. If they haven't done any transactions in the neighborhood or in the area, you might scroll in and say, hmm, I have scrolled in, handed my phone to the client and said, it is important to me that you have the best representation. I own this neighborhood. You need to hire me. And they look at the data. It's right in front of them. And then you just move right on. And you got to kind of massage it a little bit. You can't be a smart ass, but um, I do that every opportunity I get. So Lee, you got some work to do if you're coming after my farm. Listen, I just keep getting all your spam postcards in my mailbox. I'm just going to burn them in my front yard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So down below that, you're able to see um, the, the average price point of the listings and buyers that this client or this uh, agent has done. Again, giving you context clues into who's going to be on the other side. Are they used to working in this price point or are they used to working in Murfreesboro selling $200,000 homes. You know, not that they're not able to do an East Nashville deal, but you just need to know um, kind of what to expect. You can also see all of the recent listings and recent buyers. These analyze buttons will uh, pull up another little report. This is this is the one that I like to turn around and hand to uh, hand to the client. So anyway, uh, back on the homes panel. Yes, Sarah, you should feel attacked. Mix being nasty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, uh, but it's valuable information. If you are a new, if you are a new agent and you are sitting in that listing appointment, the script is yes, that agent may have done more transactions than me, but you potentially are my only client, so I'm going to work my ass off for you. So. There, Sarah. I gave you got all over. my attention. <laughs> right. So you're welcome. Um, all right. So, oh, um, in this homes panel, again, more often than not, I'm in a neighborhood, I'm showing a house, I'm at the listing, and the client says, Oh gosh, how much is that house two blocks down that just put a sign in the yard? I don't know, maybe I've done my research or maybe I'm showing them 10 properties during this tour and I just don't have an idea. So it's really nice to be able to scroll in and uh, quickly pinpoint what house they're talking about and what it might be listed for. You also, um, so if I go down over to the left a little bit, the red dots are recent sales. So you can click on those two and say, hey, yeah, you know, this one on Kirkland sold for this amount. This is another, uh, another way I use this tool is if I'm at an open house and someone comes in, a lot of times the neighbors wanna talk really quickly about all the different stuff around that's sold. And I'm not that smart. So I have this up uh, and I'm able to, you know, pull them up and kind of say, oh yeah, did you see the kitchen renovation they did or whatever, just building relationship and um, making a connection with those people. All right. Um, I mentioned earlier that you're able to add homes to your favorites. That is accomplished by this little star up in the upper right-hand corner. So a lot of times, you know, if my client is sort of interested in a property or maybe I'm personally interested in it and I don't want to keep an eye on it, if you click on that, it's going to make that property pop up in your, in your news feed whenever the status changes. And... Those are all color coded um, on the map. So that red dot, of course, means it's sold and green means that, <clears throat> excuse me, green means that it is uh, for sale. These little icons across the top, the photos pulls up all of the MLS listing photos. This commute option is nice if you, especially if you have a client that is from out of town that may not be familiar with the areas, you can click on that. You then do set your work location down at the bottom here. 
and you put in whatever their work address is and it's gonna pull up and say, hey, it's you know 10 minutes to the office or whatever. Street View is just, just that, the Google Street View. And I am moving my phone left to right. So it's kind of a 3D experience. And then if we jump back over to the map. Um, one other thing on this property scroll that I often use is down toward the bottom, there is the option for these property lines. So if you click on that, it's gonna pull it up. And I think you click over here on Airwalk. And it's weird because I'm in the office, not at the property. Um, so that's not really gonna work great. But what it does is it, it will superimpose the property lines in real time where um, at the property that you're, you're looking at. They're not 100% accurate, but it gives you a general idea of where those property lines lay. And again, you know, I'm always showing my clients the technology on my phone and um, sharing that with them. That way they don't think I'm, you know, looking at Facebook and not paying attention to them. All right. Um, I think that's it. Real quick. So, I mean, just, so the, can I ask a question on the property line thing? So are you, are you, it's telling you to where to walk. So you kind of find the corner, right? It's not mapping them based on where you're standing. True. Correct. It tells you to walk. And then once you are on the line, I guess it does it with uh, GPS. Okay. It'll say, okay. And then it kind of shoots those lines out for you. It's like finding a Pokemon or something. Yeah. <laughs> I never did all that. I don't know how that worked, but. Me neither. I just laughed because I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> all right. So any questions about any of that? Uh, Sarah says Land Glide is a great app for that. There's also an app called, and this is, you know, off of HomeSnap, but an app called OnX Hunt. So if you're doing a lot of land sales, um, that OnX Hunt is a really good uh, product. It, there's a paid version. I don't know how much it is. I don't know that I would pay for it, but it's helpful to, again, be able to tell who owns a particular parcel and uh, layout of, of lot lines. I do most of my work in the city, so the lots are pretty self-explanatory. So this app is sufficient for that for me. All right, I'm looking back through the chat just to make sure I haven't left anybody hanging. I don't think I have. All right, that's it. I'm throwing it back to someone that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's give every, let's give those two folks a hand. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Nick. It was wonderful. HomeSnap is fantastic, as, as is RPR. Um, I do want to open it up to uh, anyone. If you have any, um, or do you have any other apps or technology that you are using uh, that you think may be helpful? or ways you're using your technology. Appreciate you, Sarah, and land glide there, Sarah. No? You know, I talk a lot about technology in, um, or I share a lot of technology, I guess, in uh, Jumpstart with some of the basics uh, that I use, but, um, you know, I keep a folder with those things. And of course I keep a mortgage calculator and, uh, and Forewarn and, and Redfin and Realtor.com. I mean, I have those on there. Uh, I think I'll know about Color Snap. Not using Color Snap. I really love that for um, you can paint a room. That's Sherman Williams app. Um, so you can paint a house or a room while you're standing in it and actually match colors. Again, it's not going to be exact for paint purposes, but like Lee said, Folio for Gmail is incredible. Who else? FEMA for flood maps. There's also a really good mapping feature in um, RPR, but it's best used on the um, desktop version. Okay. Jan, what do you use Google Lens for? Well, I just, Virginia and I were informed by another realtor. We were at an open house. And they were using their phone. We're like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm using Google Lens. I wanted to see who made this wallpaper. And he, we're like, what? Show us. And you take the camera 
you download the app, use your camera, and you're basically, it snaps a picture and it pulled up all these different wallpapers and you could pinpoint that's the manufacturer and the pattern. And he said he uses it all the time. Like you're out with a client and they see a countertop or something, you can do it. So I haven't played with it as much as I should, but it's really cool. I'm glad you shared that. I had forgot about that. You know, that was one of those cool things that came out and was like, who, how, who, how are we going to use that? Who's going to use that? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. What else? If you're not familiar with Thumbtack, highly recommend it to give to clients to find vendors um, to do things. Anything from a dog walk to a house massage to uh, that's a thing. Anything you could want done, Thumbtack is good. Another local brand of that is Tackle. T-A-K-L. Um, Green Pal, if you need a, your lawn mowed quickly, Thumbtack, you can do that too, but Green Pal is another one for lawn care. That'll happen. You'll show up to the listing. It's the day of closing. It looks like shite on the shingle. Uh, Thumbtack's good for getting, have somebody in your phone, uh, quick access to take away junk because you're a real hero if you show up the day of closing and the trash cans are full and by the time they get back from closing, it's all bye-bye. So have somebody that can make shit disappear quickly. <laughs> My recommendation. Um, what else? All right. I think that's it. Okay, y'all. I appreciate you. And um, it's recorded. You can watch it again. Thank you, Lee and Nick, so much. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you. All right, y'all. Take care. Thanks,